Okay, cool. All right, cool. I think we're all set. So please welcome Giselle presenting Tactical Archives. Thank you. Hello. Uh, uh, uh. Like I, th I think the sound for for who are in the back is a little low. So I don't know. It's okay there. I'm a little nervous. It's the first time that I'm doing presentation in English. And of course you are like a special audience. And I'm really happy because uh, this format of gathering get together is kind of like very special for the times that we are now, right? In the world. And being red radical is being hard. We are in the hard times. But being radical is a practice of everyday life also, right? So gatherings or conferences like that, this get together play a role on my life, a very important role, was the way that I found my love in the middle of the Amazon, was the way that I got pregnant I didn't fuck in the middle of the conference, I'm sorry, but I, I found friends, I found lovers, I found my best friends, and also people that I got connected for so long in my life. So what I will present here, I'm not techy savvy, I would say to you, I'm more techy sassy, <laughs> I would say, but I, I, came from a generation of, I think, the first generation of the internet in Brazil. And a first generation who, are, who did a lot for the internet in a cultural sense, like designing projects, thinking a better world, using the connectivity, right? But the way, why we suggest to bring like this, when we applied, this project was being like, it, it's a working process project. So we started actually in 2018, but it has a long way behind that. Like in the back, in the past, who made like three of us, which is me, Giselle, Chris Heber, the Tachi Wells, three Brazilians from different places, working remotely pretty much all first semester on this project. And, uh, but the way that got us together to do this was because we believe that the internet culture in our culture, in Brazilian culture, had like a very uh, contribution really specific for us. You know, in a counterculture, contribution was very important for us. So it's a kind of way to go back in the past 20 years, right? And we have 20 years of internet in Brazil, and go to the, the first decade and check what we did, what we did, right, during these years. And anyway, during like this 20 years, uh, a lot of changes, like technological changes we saw, but also we saw changes in our lives. The internet, like the connectivity, actually made us change our position in the world. As I, I, I said before, and most of the women that I know who are involved in these networks, in these networks, pretty much in Brazil, I would say in Latin America too, like during the 20 years or 15 years, got pregnant, divorced, you know? So we are not all the time on the scene. We're not all the time doing something related to the networks in that sense. But we, we, we were working. And we see, of course, all the political changes and all the po technical political roles playing in our lives, too. So, this project is about uh, backups, a bunch of websites and archives, so like files, who, what, that we 
got we we had lost kind of during this decade, like pretty much for the from the first decade. Weeks wakas full of spawns and virus, free like a uh, independent uh, hosts who are like got from federal police like got arrested and disappear with all our our websites anyway like not payment for the web server or web host anyway we lost a lot from our production production for the first decade and the project that came out this year was okay what about if we start to check the story again by the publications that we had on the web and pretty much digital publications and which means books which means documents articles tutorials manuals whatever all written in portuguese and all available uh, all distributed and produced by brazilians right i'm like very like i'm trying to be i'm not talking about latin america i'm not talking about brazil because it's like a continental like it's huge and so we are for now like looking uh, magnifying like this aspects from our country but of course we want to get for like in this progress uh, get more connected with Latin America as we were before with other countries uh, anyway I'm gonna keep it so the networks that we uh, try to um, create or observe like on these publications they were uh, read in the beginning of the, the, the last decade they were like talking about technical tech, technical media, meta hisclaging, any media free radio. So we were a bunch of people which believed, no, that believed to change our politics, to change the organizations, to change the way that the system um, worked in Brazil. And this is not exactly the beginning of the internet in Brazil, but it was in the middle of the, the first decade. And so I'm talking about 2000s. So what the democracy looked like for us was, for example, the protests against ALCA, the, or, the first world social forum in 2002. And right after that, we designed, we got together because most of like the people who are like in the in the mailing lists or that in that moment we didn't have a wakas or wika or wikis in blogs, but a few people actually collaborated with, to the net time. In the net time, had like a Latino let, net time. And in that point, the, the Latino Net Time trying to make more technical labs and, and spread in the world, and the interest was to make a technical lab in Latin America. So we got together with a bunch of groups and we decided to make this node in Brazil. And this node like, was kind of like a sequence of facts because it was exactly right after like the the the, mar, the march now the protest against Alca, the social forum the social the world social forum and then like the festival that we put together 300 people collaborating uh in this festival which was kind of like five days totally open and with a wish to put together what is the sense of tactical media in Brazil. So after that, like we, we did a lot, but it was a bunch of festivals and, and I'm gonna show you just a little bit, but it's all in Portuguese, I didn't translate it. But anyway, it was a bunch of, a sequence of 
gatherings with di in different formats, like festivals, labs, like um, uh, books, like guides, guides, uh, uh, anything like um, platforms, and so it was a sequence of things happened in the ten. Wow, ten minutes already. Well, I need to run. So a sequence of um, events and initiatives happened. So I'm gonna put this video just to you guys know a little bit. What I don't have, what I don't have, like uh, it's it's like uh, the problem is here. No, just go to Radical Networks. Uh, yeah, but I was connected before. It's okay. But I, I need to. I don't know. I don't know. Well, 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 sonic vibrations. Oh, uh, sonic vibrations. vibrations. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
what is loading? E is my computer? We all it's the internet. What the heck? Up and down. Holmes, can you turn off your, your connection, please? <laughs> but anyway, uh, so when we, I got together the books, I divided like in four uh, episodes, kind of, or four moments. And the four moments are, were like four, every four years, which was not related to the president or the, the government, like federal government. What related to the changes of the political changes that we have, which the books were saying a lot. So, <laughs> so the book said a lot. In the way that we found it, actually, this archive, part of like a backup of books that we had on mediatactica.info from Educator uh, before, in another archive form for uh, disarchivo.org, which was the Christina Hiba's project, which collected all the PDFs, posters, magazines, and publications uh, um, everywhere, like from all the production, art production, political art production in Brazil. So we got together, and in 2018, like this curator, who, has, who, is, who is journalist too, decided like to make an exhibition, was planning an exhibition for almost like two years. Years, and one of the chapters of her book was about exactly like this moment, the first decade of the internet. So how it's not about an art, one artist prank the media, but uh, networks prank the media, so doing like some stuff related to the media né, in Brazil. So I, it's a kind of a his, historical uh, ways of to, to show like what is this art is related to uh, in Brazil. And we got invited and it, this commissioned work actually per, was the way that we built up, this is like the phases that I wanted to show you. The way that we build, like the cartography, our online interface with, which is the the mediatachica disarchivo.org with all .org with all the books, and a device space which was a laboratory that we invited like ten women to get together from different moments from this two decades to collaborate and input like some information to this map. So this cartography is kind of like this. Um, like, gosh. Um, a diagram of a bunch of facts and initiatives like in books in how like the, the facts and the situations and the books are related in different times. So we built, like we designed it with another artist, Lucas Argentelli, this timeline, it's kind of like cloud, timeline, cloud, putting together hashtags like how, how the books and whatever. And in this moment, in the exhibition, which was at the end of August, beginning of September, months ago, oh, sorry, we uh, invite the ladies to make, so the panel, like, so we printed and make a nine meters of the cartography, like, in the, this exhibition space, and we invite, like, these ladies to, get together, understand our process, like how we, we put uh, like the, level, the layers of information on this cartography, and make some uh, inputs on that. So the way that like we came out was a lot of other initiatives that didn't come out in our minds. Like, so the way was more like bringing narratives and pretty much women narratives to that. Why? Because also 
when we analyze like these two decades, most of the story of the internet was written by guys, our friends, sometimes our lovers. But by guys, in the way that they narrate, it's kind of like the same ways as always. And actually, all our protagonism in these initiatives was kind of like shade or kind of like not visible. So the way that we we trying to make it visible in in that sense was like to signalize that. We, our way to contribute for all these events or books, the way that we create books, the way that we create the, the knowledge was immersive, was pretty close to radical pedagogy, it was getting together and working collaboratively in different levels, which is more like a female, like a feminine side of uh, uh, perspective. Anyway, I wish to show the videos, but I don't have time. Um, uh, so the the end of uh, this process, which is which is we're still like working on, it's kind of like to find out our the shape of our cyber feminism, which is very different from Europe, very different from in the U.S., very close to Latin America. The cartography as a tool, like for radical pedagogy, for sure, and reminded us that the most important technology that we've been developing, even if Brazil is mess, messy, Paulo Freire, Augusto Boal taught us a lot about this. So we do, we know how to do social technology. You know, so you know how to use this as a, as a tool. You know how to make these tools to make change in conscious. So, so I think this process taught us about our way to perceive those, the, the way that we are related to technologies, the way that we are related to our counterculture, and how we produce this radical thinking and knowledge. So that's it. And I think this is a, a key, an important key to analyze our changes for the future, notably in Brazil. That's it. Thank you very much. Sorry about the... <laughs> I was just to show the videos, but uh, any questions? Do I, they have a time for questions? Okay. So, do you guys have questions? I don't know if I was confused. So, you were saying before that in the first period um, you had this like very radical network in Brazil that I think in Europe we all heard about and, uh, and, and related to. And then you say what happened next was that four years later, most of the people involved got in politics and they got like maybe uh, uh, involved with Lula's uh, development. And then, and then you say that uh, nothing happens until four years later where you get for Adoisha, uh, which I'm not super familiar with, but I understand that it was a case of decentralizing, uh, you know, development, uh, not so much as a, as a decentralizing uh, experiment as, as just like taking what was happening downtown and move it to the places of, 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 of great need, no? Uh, so what happens when you, when you get those radical networkers to work for the government? Isn't that, isn't that the way to go? Like, you know, to get involved in like the trust, Trotskyan way, I guess, uh, to get involved in the infrastructures and, and help development in a way that it makes sense? I think we, I think we need like a, a upgrade on our sense of the, uh, um, more political maturity. And I, I bet because we have like a our democracy, we, take the, we took over democracy back, we took back the democracy in the, in the 80s. So I'm 43, so I grew up in the dictatorship era, and in my 
child, like when I was 10, like I, I saw like the, the democracy comes up. So I think the way that happened with Lula government was kind of um, eufor euphoria, euphoria? You know, like a euphoria to getting involved in, in change the system, which is very related to the, the same euphoria to change the world using the internet, using technologies, right? Uh, was pro for us, was very close moment. Uh, I'm not saying the macro politics is a wrong way to go, but I would say it's really nice to keep like micro politics in radical sense going always, always, because it's a it's a seed, it's seedlings. You know what I'm saying? And it's seedlings that change like 10, 20, 30, and keep going, never die, and change like our lives, like your life. Your so I'm I'm talking that sense. Like even if I I. I believe that most of, like, I wish like to have more years working on this archive to use that as a, a bibliography, as a reference for education, for other kind of ways to, to uh, be in class. Being class, no, like discussing things with other people. You know what I'm saying? So I believe in that sense. I'm not, but. I'm not just like not. Uh, I'm not enthusiastic in macro, so I can tell you more. But I think, okay. But I think the mimetic, myth, mythical Bolsonaro era that we have now. It's a uh, uh, also an important key of of what is the radical in the left practice in Brazil goes, you know? And we need to rethink that soon. So it's a way of, it's an important way to upgrade our uh, practices, our way to interact, our way to uh, discuss, you know what I'm saying? So it's a rethink. And to rethink is not just looking to the opposition, but looking what we did in our history, like what we did in our culture, our peers, you know, our like really colleagues, like friends, and you know, that's the way. And if you have like resources for that, put together. I think we're starving. We're like going in the direction of starvation. And this is a kind of way that I'm thinking this archives is like, okay, if we will be in our star starvation, we can have this. I hope to not have like just on the web, but in the internet, <laughs> like, you know, in its small, like in a raspberry thing, you know? and bring together as like all library, all the information that we can share and keep going. That's it. Any more other question? Thank you so much. This was so uh, inspiring and great. Um, I wanted to just uh, affirm, I guess, from what you said about you talking only about Brazil and maybe there's connections that, I mean, it's full, I mean, I think of parallels on so many levels and two things, uh, that came to mind. One is also to the importance of uh, including in, in the tactical archive of, of reclaiming sort of women's participation all the way along because every, I'm a similar age and every single movement I've ever been a part of has in the end had a history told about it that left out all the women and that's true from like music scenes to like radical legal activism you know the the history of the electronic frontier foundation a book just came out written by a guy involved in it and all the women are gone including the founder <laughs> one of the founders you know like all of these different narratives if are, are so quickly reclaimed by the dominant framework of what appropriate activity is and it's by friends and lovers and partners and you're like I was there with you and then it falls out so so important uh, and also um, around the issue of working within the government it's similar in that uh, with things like these pirate radio projects when people seek legalization sometimes it's very good for a moment and then the government changes 
and they lose a license or that, you know. So it, you need to have these, that's, I was talking about exilic spaces, like spaces that are outside of these frameworks always, because that's where the energy is to keep these things going, because the systems uh, either reabsorb or just abandon you at various times, right? So I, I've just, uh, it's not really a question, but just to thank you for, I think the really close and deep thinking and doing you're, you have makes it so fertile for other, all these other movements, you know, because you focus so closely on the local and the specific. So it's just like really it's beautiful. So thank you. Actually, the, to apply this is also like to, to understand how is uh, this perception of internet culture territorialized in other countries, in, especially in the North. You know, because actually the way that I began like to search on library on the bi bibliography was like, why? How can I talk about internet not using like books from Gert, Gert Loving <laughs> or books from Europe, like thoughts from Europe? How can I talk about the internet that I lived, like using like the words of people who did that? <laughs> with me or you know like so searching the library I think like the black people the black uh, movement is doing that a lot in Brazil find a lot, a lot of references like made uh, I think it's also a moment that I've women like researchers are, are doing that a lot in Brazil like searching library bi bibliography bibliography from other women you know so I think it's a, also a, a way to dig out our, um, our, where we came from, you know, from, eh, from where we came from, no, where we came from. <laughs> anyway, so I, I was very interested to, to have the, the feedback of how is that perception for the, the North sense. It's done? We can do, we can do one more question, yeah. Uh, thanks for your talk. I really like that you're kind of giving us a little bit of a big picture thing of the 20 years of, of working in these territories. And I want to try to ask you a question, formulate a question about micropolitics and the territories being sort of like the, the communities, our local struggles, and uh, uh, how to phrase this. Um, I feel like there's there's all over, it's not just Brazil's example, but the, the right wing, the, the, the entrenched power has used all of this mapping of what we've been creating and they have the power on the ground to, to use it against us and to, to kind of empower the corporate structures and whatnot. And in micropolitics, if we think of I'm not really sure, I haven't kept up with the land struggles in, in Brazil, but like thinking about how we fight for things on the ground. Right now we have a struggle in Berlin, for example, just around the corner, that the Google campus is gonna try to move into this neighborhood. And like thinking maybe less about tools and, and, uh, and networks, but really thinking about how we reclaim things that are uh, very tangible, uh, struggles that we fight for locally and in the micropolitics, and so not not giving up so much of our our power and 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 energies to these mappings and and uh, virtual, but trying to reclaim land and territory and community. So if you could maybe talk about how that's playing out in Brazil. You know, like between when the, a lot of when we had a lot of collaboration of the networks working to the Lula government, I think it was uh, we have more Brazilians that are probably he can collaborate with that. But I think we have like a a very like Gilberto, you did like this really well. Uh, visibility of quilombolas, of indigenous groups, of uh, uh, the landless movement, but it was not a visibility on the web. I think it was a junction of a bunch of activists actually using the, the, all the apparatus from the government and the resources to be there and contribute with knowledge to like sharing knowledge. And maybe, I'm not a, 
I'm not academic or research on social studies and history, but my my clue would say, I would I I would say that the second the second government like, government in Lula was really tough for radios and it seems that it was amazing but wasn't. Actually I think because that contribution of many people working in the base like in the grassroots movement was good but not in the sense in political in government sense and like in the from the top was terrible. And uh, I think the same has Obama played with a bunch of like uh, in in the U.S., so this kind of like what the what we expected something a big change and didn't happen. Actually, it was way more uh, violent. Uh, but I think what we have now, the way of resist, was a contribution of this a kind of join uh, joining like or like the urban and rural getting getting together. I think. The last 10 years, we, we I've been seeing that, so it's more like visible. Uh, in many other, pro sometimes artistic projects, like Vicente, Vicente Tosi, for example, I think it's Vicente Tosi, who made like videos nas aldeias, like it has a bunch of videos, you know, like in, like indigenous people like filming themselves, like making that. So I, I, I believe, that was a uh, another. That is another step, and I don't believe. I'm not saying like in virtual levels, but it's. I would say we are very connected to books all the time, but we need different tools to talk about, in, to talk in different levels too. I would say like maps. Maps like in the past was a big orientation for explore the world, right? And we need cartography also to understand the techno politics for real. You know, and I, I've been seeing a bunch of activists working with cartography to do that in grassroots communities, you know. So I, I'm just saying like we need to use it, we have to use these tools as a as a paper and pencil, you know, as in the proximity and continuity. It's huge, important in maintain. It's become it's becoming rare, right? So that's the the struggle that we have everywhere. Okay, um, thank you so much for your talk. Thank you for <laughs>